Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Peter Barber. I am primarily a professional opera singer, music producer, and of course a bass vocalist. Today for the first time we're going to be checking out Gigi Delana's cover of Unholy by Sam Smith. This was just recently recommended to me. I saw it. I said let's go for it. I love the original song. Let's see what she does with it with her band I believe she's in. And uh, so yeah, this is a new artist for me. This is of course a first time reaction, but this is also an analysis video. So I will be pausing often to talk about vocal technique, artistic choices, other things, but a lot of vocal technique for sure. If you'd like to watch the original video all the way straight through, I will include a link in the description below. Then you can come on back here if you want to learn more about what Gigi is doing in her vocal performance. I think you pronounce Gigi like Gigi, I actually call my grandmother on my mom's side Gigi, and that's how we spell it. So hopefully that's right. If not, you can, of course, correct me in the comments. Um, speaking of comments, please do leave a, leave a comment. It could be as simple as saying, hi, Peter. A lot of you have been doing that lately, and uh, I really appreciate it. It helps the algorithm. Please like this video. Please subscribe to the channel. Throw that bell on for notifications. And if you are getting a lot out of your musical experience while listening to me, if you're learning things that you didn't know about the voice, if you are getting more excited about what you're listening to, definitely consider supporting me via Patreon for as little as $1 a month, guys. Very helpful to support me as a young educator, a young creator, a young singer, a young performer, um, all that good stuff. I'd greatly appreciate it. So check that out. Link is also in the description below. And without further ado, let's check out Gigi Delana's cover of Unholy by Sam Smith and Kim Petrus. Okay, I already love this vibe. So just about the so we've got it all right, so Heavy drums, like pretty gritty soundscape, a ton of synths. Looks like we got dual wielding synths here. This guy on the left, um, really cool atmosphere. It already feels like a good adaptation of the original, which already is pretty dark and gritty in its own right. Um, like subject matter and just the uh, the production as well. So I like where this is already started, and we haven't even gotten to the singing yet. Back. One more, one more. All right, let's let's talk about that. First of all, I love the abrupt tempo change. I was gonna say they were taking a pretty hot tempo for the song. All right, so her voice, she has, let's just talk about her voice for a minute. Really, really good vocal fold closure. That means during each oscillation of the vocal folds, they are closed for a, a, a majority of the time, a larger percentage of the time. This is called the closed quotient. Other instances where you get really high closed quotients are musical theater belting, very high in chest voice or pretty much anywhere in an opera singer's range, you that a big focus is efficiency of sound. And if you have a high closed quotient, if the vocal folds are shut for the majority of the time during each oscillation, also this is how vocal folds vibrate, then there is less air escaping, which means you can sustain phrases for much longer. And not only that, you'll have, you'll have a lot of high harmonic content in the sound, which give the sound its cut, its bite. In this case with GG, I'm hearing a little bit of grit, or at least potential for grit in like a very rock belt kind of way. You get that, you get all of that from a high closed quotient. So she has very efficient use of the sound so far, and I really like her voice right off the bat. Like it. Lucky, lucky girl. She 
I love okay she, she, this is so cool because she's like she's really messing around with the vocalism and like playing with playing with a lot of vocal colors she's sometimes really full on singing sometimes doing almost more like voice acting and what it's doing is it's creating so much contrast phrase to phrase in her singing it's keeping me very interested because I'm like, what the hell is she going to do next? You just don't know. You know, if she had just sung the whole thing straight through, it's like, okay, she's singing. But with this, there's like, there's like almost vocal characters, like she's doing voiceover work for some of these lines. And then she goes into singing with that really efficient sound I was just talking about. And then back into the more character-y stuff. And it's, it's very interesting. And it, it's cool that she, she's changing it on a dime and keeping it very... Uh, she's certainly keeping me engaged while watching. Lucky, lucky girl. Like that first line, lucky, lucky, lucky. There's like a there's a bunch of air coming through. There's a little bit of turbulence happening to the vocal folds, meaning a not efficient use. Um, like a little grit in the sound, and it's just very character driven. It's like going for that effect. And not the goal not being a beautiful tone or something. Like you. But then she got married. She got married to a boy like you. There's like a pretty big contrast between those two deliveries. Lucky, lucky girl. She got married to a boy like you. She kick you out if she ever ever knew. They're flipping up into into her falsetto and out of it. <laughs> More like experimentation. And I'm guessing going with what she feels. She strikes me as someone that if she has an urge to sing something a certain way, she'll just do it, which is fantastic. Like two two flips there. There's also a lot of like, uh, 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 like laborious breathing. Again, just to add effect and add colors. This, is of course, not because she needs to be breathing heavy. This is all effects to add to this atmosphere and the vocalism that make this cover what it is. Really enjoying this so far. Alright, so then she brings it back up into the kind of vocal territory where she's going to take on the chorus. And different from the original too. Keep your business clean. She goes clean. Brings it up there. Sick. Also, notice how she goes clean. She opens up a little on the vowel there. These are like very minor quick things that it might even be subconscious, but make us. She might have felt a little more comfortable going for a more open vowel up top where, when she's jumping up to this higher note. So instead of going keep your business clean and go straight to like a pure E vowel. She goes clean, clean, and then kind of closes down to it once she's established the pitch. Clean. Oh, yes. She put like a little flip in there too. That's so, so yeah, her, just a very, so far not a, not a ton of grit in her belt range. We're hearing more of it in the kind of character stuff she's doing. Really efficient vocal, like very healthy vocal fold action happening. Just a very pure sound, very efficient sound. And I love that she takes this, this refrain of the chorus up 
And again, it's different from the original. She goes kind of more into Beltland. Let's get some, we'll get some pitches and figure out what she's doing. She be popping it. Popping it. So A flat four. Yeah, she put it down slowly. Oh. A flat. Opens up to that ah a little bit. I think just an artistic choice. I don't think she needed to change the vowel there. Yeah, she put it down slowly. I like I I, I love that little pop into into the falsetto just for a second. Down slowly. There's a little bit of grit there. Also, I don't know if you guys have seen the show Arcane. It's an absolute masterpiece, and the music for that show is a masterpiece. And it was composed. It was it was composed like to perfectly coincide with the show, as opposed to music being more of an afterthought. Like they wrote the music and the show simultaneously. It's amazing. There's a, there's a great series on YouTube called Bridging the Rift, and it's about how that show came together. That's all to say, I think Gigi should try to get on the soundtrack for season two or three because I think this vibe could be absolutely perfect for some of the, the dark themes on that show. Call it now. Get Gigi Delana on the Arcane soundtrack. Okay, you heard it here first. Again, another a different voice. Like, I just love she's using the whole palette of vocal colors. Like, nothing is off limits. This is so good. This is like this is true artistry. Wait, I gotta flag that little. Si Listen to that little, that little synth solo happening. Right here. All the things I've been saying. Now, this second verse is super kind of monotone by nature but she's making it interesting because again she's experimenting with the voice she's putting in different colors and when she does choose to sing it's this it's this gorgeous very pure efficient use of the vocal system So she is introducing a little bit of grit at the start of these phrases. So I haven't heard any like sustained gritty belting yet, but she's often starting a phrase with a little bit of grit in it. Oh, there it was. Okay, I spoke too soon. There, there is some some a little bit more sustained grit. Up to C sharp five. So this is the C sharp right above tenor high C. Now this is cool because this isn't like that gritty rock mode. Now it's still very connected. It's like fully connected to chest voice, but she's intentionally introducing turbulence to the sound. This is when the vocal votes aren't just going like this to produce pitch. There's also a little bit of like this happening. And you have to train it to be able to do it with endurance. Like a great example of this is, I don't know if you guys know Jonathan Young. He's an incredible artist on YouTube that I've had the pleasure of collaborating with. And he does these amazing metal covers and writes his own metal music. And he, he does, I think he did a video with Bobby Water, Bobby Bass, um, about how you train up being able to sing long term, introducing grit to the vocal folds. There is a... I don't want to say a healthy way. There are unhealthy ways to do it. I don't want to say there's a healthy, a purely healthy way to do it. 
there are healthier ways to do it and there are ways to do it sustainably i think is a better term for it there are ways to sustainably sing with grit in your voice Gigi clearly has this down spades it sounds very natural for her to switch into that gritty production and it works so well for this style of music Up to a D5. Okay, another half step up. Yeah, still fully connected to chest voice, too. Like barely even saying the text at this point, like super intimate in your ear, like objectively, like just like a, yeah, really intimate in your ear, sexy way of sexy, badass way of delivering this text. And all the instruments are gone. It's just, it's just Gigi singing. Now. Like barely even moving her mouth here. It's like you can hear like there's there's that there's that like turbulence in the vocal folds. So it's like intentionally not going for a, a pure sound here. There's she's allowing that grit to be there even when it's soft singing. Like stared into the camera there too. <laughs> wait a second, wait a second. I think that's I think that's F sharp fives. Now this is probably this could be still fully connected to chess. It's more likely a like a very like a connected mixed voice, like a well supported mixed voice with some grit. That's how a lot of the high rock belters do it. It's some kind of mixed voice, but it still has a lot of heft in the sound. So we're in the final chorus of this song. We've got, just to break down, just instrumentally what's happening, we've got drums even heavier. We've got a, a, a major, you know, virtuosic solo happening on the guitar. We've got Gigi doing a lot of improv belting, rock belting, and more action on the keys and bass guitar as well. <laughs> E5 there. I think I'm in love. <laughs> that was so epic. Wow. I will be doing more coverage of Gigi and her band. Does her band have a name? Just goes by Gigi Delano. Um, that was super sick. I don't know if you guys could tell. I really like dark, gritty, badass stuff. Um, all about it. And I don't make enough videos for that genre of music. So please send more recommendations like this along. Happy to check them out. Um, like Nightwish is another group I need to look at more. The uh, symphonic metal kind of stuff. Love all this stuff. I mean, I really like so many different kinds of music. 
I think there's there's merit and enjoyment that can be found in any kind of music, but I do lean towards the darker stuff. So this is a really, really cool surprise for me. I think they did an excellent job. Gigi's a major vocal talent. Um, hope you guys learned something. Hope you enjoyed my analysis and commentary. And uh, if you did, if you did learn something and you enjoy this, please do consider joining my Patreon for as little as $1 a month. Very helpful to support me. It is where I get a lot of my financial support these days from Patreon. So it's an amazing thing. Super helpful for me. And uh, yeah, if you if you like, well, go ahead, like this video, subscribe, throw a comment up there, add the bell. And uh, there's much more coming in the future. Two videos a week, Monday, Thursday. So that's the goal. And uh, I'm trying to keep that up while I'm keeping this opera career going. So that's it, guys. This is super fun. GG. Call me. See ya. <laughs>